Thank you so very much, Stephanie Ayeta, and uh, your very interesting guest. Not only is he funny, but he is a bit peculiar. Yes, I, I, I don't know if you caught the epitaphs and, and the things and how he went to the graveyard at Langata Cemetery. Like, where? I have questions. I have questions for days, but we will get to that later. Meanwhile, you can still interact with us at White Five on Facebook, White Five Four channel on X, Y Two Five Four underscore channel on Instagram, and of course all the rest threads and them. And of course, if you missed an interview or you just want to watch one over and over again, YouTube channel is Y Two Five Four as well. My name is Valentine, or at Color Me Val, and it's always, always, it's an honor to be here with you. Now, it is about that time for Youth Affairs. We rebranded in case you haven't figured it out yet. So you used to call it youth and politics, but we decided, we sat down as, as panelists. Come out to our kubot, because my youth affair sounds better, because sometimes it's not only about politics, that there are a lot of other things involved, whether it is politics or not, but we're going to put it in the mix. Now, today's guest on youth affairs, I don't even know, let me try my best to introduce her. If I make a mistake, she will. I want to believe <laughs> she will graciously forgive me but her name is grace Muinde. she is a lawyer and vice chairperson of the fika Med mediation center yes and she is as lovely as she is smart so i really can't wait for her to get uh, started with us and the topic of the day is the impact of mis or disinformation on the participation of women and youth in political processes so i'd like to start from the known to the unknown so first of all how many actually are we as women in the political arena and maybe the parities that come with it? But before all that, good morning. Uh, good morning. Did I miss something? Yes. What did I miss? <laughs> I knew it. Uh huh. Um, my second name is uh -huh. Yokao. Okay. Probably okay. I thought um, you're not going to probably be able to pronounce it. That's why I left it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Yes. And thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Fantastic. Yes, mm -hmm. and thank you so much for giving me an opportunity mm -hmm. to be in this show. Mm -hmm. I really do appreciate mm -hmm. and um, very energetic about speaking about women mm -hmm. and youth in politics. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is good to have you. It's very, very good to have you. We've been having, uh, well, I want to choose my words carefully here, but since the, the beginning of the year, 2024, I've seen a lot of women coming together for one reason or the other, whether it was the femicide march or uh, this or that. But tell me, do you feel like we're rep well represented as women in politics? Um, um, I, I, I'd say currently, a lot is being done. Mm -hmm. A lot in, is being done. Comparing um, since the Constitution 2010 that um, was put in to ensure probably the two thirds of women are um, being put and being um, assisted to be part of politics. Mm -hmm. It is being actually in the current government, they've mm -hmm. ensured the two thirds um, women have been put in place in both national government mm -hmm. and in the county government. Mm -hmm. And especially in the county government, at least we have 23% of women who are, being, who are representing the rest of the women in the country to be able to set out their voices, mm -hmm. yes. All right, thank you for bringing up the Constitution. I think it's a very fascinating document. I do my best to brush up on it. So Article okay. 27, that talks about equality and freedom for discrimination. I think that's where it all stems from. Okay. And Part 3 says, women and men have the right to equal treatment, including the right to equal opportunities in political, economical, cultural, and social spheres. And, and we're saying, basically, that we're, we're going somewhere. We're headed somewhere. There's a, there's a good track record. Um, I'd say there is. Mm -hmm. However, women in politics, it is a very, um, it, is, it, it is not an easy road to walk on. Mm -hmm. It is very tough. It is very thorny. And if we look back and see how women have had to endure so much, especially if you are a woman and you're vying for any political seat, it becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. Because you'll find in the, in the era that you're in, right now even in the villages you'll find people with the smartphones so if at all um someone decides to troll you as a woman the first question will be are you married mm -hmm. do you have children mm -hmm. you know so these are some of the questions that we women in we, we women who are trying to be in politics get because does it mean because i'm not married does it mean because i don't have children i cannot be in politics i cannot be a leader you know be and some of these questions are usually not asked 
for men. Mm -hmm. For men, it's usually about their agenda, mm -hmm. uh, their roles in, in um, leadership. But when it comes to women, it has to be about my personal life. Mm -hmm. And you've also seen um, in most of um, women in politics who have been in so many trolls, especially on Facebook, you'll find their blogs. People are being paid to um, troll women, especially in politics. So you'll have to choose be between vying and your dignity mm -hmm. because you'll find people out there will go digging you out and trying to um, look for things that are going to be negative about you, but they'll not look at the positive things that you're going to bring to the women. Because um, there are different women. Um, there are marginalized women. We have women with disabilities. And all these women, if we, we don't have um, people who are being put in to ensure that all these, peop all these women are, are being um, checked out and to see if we are going to have a space and have a voice to speak, Mm -hmm. then it becomes a very serious problem in our society. Mm -hmm. Yes. And especially, I feel, where we are right now, it's not as if... I, w I want to say African, but it's not an African thing because they're mm -hmm. African countries, like, mm -hmm. for example, Tanzania, who are actually working with a female president. Mm -hmm. Like, the yes. top office, Buana, ni Murembo. Yeah, so... But it's, it's a very... It's a very... Uh, male dominated place and you have to be very formidable you have to be cold and calculating but the funny thing is when i was googling it now when the topic was brought to me the first thing i did let's see what google thinks first so i'm like uh okay top female politicians in kenya the next question i see who is the most beautiful who is the i was like okay why 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 are we now just not about our families also about our physique so you're either very beautiful or you're very cunning, but you can't be both. <laughs> Is that true? Um, I'll, I'll just be candid about what you've said. Mm -hmm. um, there's a special place in hell for women who bring other women down. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look actually even on the social media and these blogs and these pages, you'll find that, okay, I'll give an example of um, a, a very vocal woman. Um, leader in politics, mm -hmm. Colin Joroke. Mm -hmm. We have seen how she's been trolled mm -hmm. because of speaking out, you see. And it is we, our own, it, our own people are the ones who are making us. Mm -hmm. They are the same people who are bringing us down. Mm -hmm. And it is very saddening that you as a woman will want to bring another woman down. Because me being up there means that I am going to also help you and help our voices be heard. Because if at all, r currently I believe um, the population of women is 51% to 52%, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong with my, my statistics. And if at all we are not given an opportunity mm -hmm. to ensure that our voices are being heard, we'll remain in the kitchens. Because I think um, wow. in our society, we, we are still um, patriarchal. We're still patriarchal because Men don't think women need to be leaders. Mm -hmm. And you'll even find it in parliament that even when a woman tries to speak, um, other things are brought up. How you're dressing, mm. how, how you look. Do you have to have makeup when you're going to parliament? All, the, all, all, all these things, mm -hmm. if you look at them, they're really not important. What is more important is what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember there's, there's a time after just the previous uh the current actually the previous and the current president their first ladies happened to have short hair water yes. and now it became uh, uh, an si unit like if you don't have short hair then you're eating someone's money and you're not humble at all so you should look like this mm -hmm. so what's happening is it a bar to be set uh, should we all be conforming to what mm -hmm. they think we should look like because they don't really wear makeup M Margaret Kenyatta and Rachel yes. Ruto do not mm -hmm. or have never seen Mm -hmm. So is that something that we should be doing? Just be natural. Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a jack of all trades. I've also um, done a short course on beauty and cosmetics. Wow. And the reason as to why I did it was because I felt at some point I never felt like I was beautiful enough. And I felt like maybe I need to do a little bit more and the try and see. The is a lie. You know? The yeah. And I think also as I was growing up, I had short hair. Mm -hmm. My dad believed that if I have short hair, I'm just Oma. You need to waste time. Yes, the rest of the things I'll be wasting time. So you see, even 
from where we come from. Mm -hmm. Some of us, at least we were um, lucky enough to have parents who understand that education is important because to some other parents, they feel like educating a girl child is not important. Mm. What are you going to do? You see, so they prefer, there's that, there's that stereotyping because if you're a woman and I educate you, what else will you do? But if you educate this man, he's better off than me because I believe as women we have to work twice as much to be given and to be recognized as a man is in the society. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's there's an article that I just finished reading actually on the same but before I get to it I want to ask do you think we're being encouraged right now as it is a society to think about being in the political arena when you're asked what do you want to do when you grow up Oh, I want to be an accountant, I want to be a model. Do you think that they're encouraging us to try and get into the political field? Or it's just something that when you're an Akwangana, they call them women with the backs of steel. Is it just for them or is mm -hmm. do you think we'll be encouraged? I believe um, there are great women out here who are instilling good values in girls. And I think it starts from home and also in schools. And I think in most schools in high schools right now, um, I think there are sessions that are being put in place for um, these young girls to uh, understand that when they get out of school, there are other things better to do rather than probably just when you're done and you're in campus mm -hmm. and you choose what to do, you can still be a leader. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I believe not everyone probably was born a leader. That's true. Not everyone was born a leader. Or a public speaker. Mm. Yes, or probably a public speaking and all that. Mm -hmm. But I believe there are so many ways, especially even in devolution. I think de devolution, um, especially at the county level, mm -hmm. is helping so many youths. And they've come up with um, various ways of um, having platforms where the youth have to speak up and have to talk about what um, are their needs. But however, I really don't think they're being heard. And especially if it's more on politics, you m more, more youths are usually used than mm -hmm. being assisted or rather being shown the way on how to um, get into the political space or how to be better as a leader. Because in most cases, especially when it comes to politics and when it comes to vying, and now we have um, those rallies whenever there are politics, these people use young people mm -hmm. but they will never they will never they, 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 they will never impose or maybe point out things that you as a person who's assisting them get mm. these seats on how you're supposed to go about it mm -hmm. yes because when you're done helping them mm -hmm. that's it and and it's very sad that the help is usually once off it's not that I'm, yes. I'm doing this for you for this x amount of time mm -hmm. but it's not but uh, this amount and then it just disappears like that especially mm -hmm. with what's going on right now but i do want to refer to a debate that was very heated on another mainstream oh my voice sorry <coughs> mainstream media platform so our, our senator <laughs> senator of nairobi was mm -hmm. was very heated talking about how uh, I, I don't want to point fingers, but how sometimes you find people in, in specific roles of government, mm -hmm. they w when it comes time for public participation, because that, again, is catered for in the Constitution, you mm -hmm. cannot just uh, you pass a, a bill or something like that. W there must be public participation. So now what they do is they take the youth or the elderly and then, you know, transport them from wherever they have come from so that they just amplify a certain thing that they want to happen. So that leaves us, we, we feel like we're making a difference, but we're really not. We're just being told to say something. How would mm -hmm. you explain to a youth that their voice is important? Um, there's no best way mm -hmm. to, to um, tell people or tell the young people um, how best you can do it. But I believe... Um, there are numerous ways to um, ec educate people and instill knowledge in people and make them understand um, the importance of being in the front line um, in youth leadership and also for women um, being in leadership and politics and all that. Um, I remember there's a time I asked um, one of my colleagues um, and I asked her if she had voted and she told me no. And I asked her why and she said, does it even count? Wow. 
you see mm. being in a society where people think that my vote doesn't count is quite um, frightening mm -hmm. because if we don't practice our sovereign rule like we the rule of the people mm. we are the same people who um, w without your vote mm -hmm. it means you're voting um, uh, your, your vote is going to um, not ensure the right person to get in mm -hmm. leadership you know and it it is quite unfortunate that most people didn't even vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. But for some and especially reason. for the youth. Most of them don't vote. And I was going to say something mildly violent, but let me just hold myself together. Uh, so there's now the article I was mentioning, I will tell you about it in detail later, but I wanted to read this part. So there, there are sections on, on about, on women in politics, et cetera, et cetera. And it's as recent as they have statistics for the, uh, the previous general election. So it has gender violence in the mix. I thought gender violence in politics, I'm like, yes. The magnitude of brutality women face in uh, the African polls is unmatched. Intimidation and real brutality women face as contestants in politics has a significant influence on their political participation. So in the Kenya political landscape, the polls have experienced violence from 1992 1992, comprising racial conflicts and other types of violence. Women running for political office are targeted both verbally and physically. Now we put in cyberbullying as well. This violence against women in politics has an aim of making them withdraw from politics. It is violence that manifests at all stages of the electoral cycle and continues even while they are in office. Do you agree? I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. Uh -huh. Now, let me give you a story of a um, lady who was actually vying for MC in Meru. Um, she had grounded well in her area. Mm. But um, I think a few weeks towards the elections, um, a video circulated wow. all over social media. It was about her personal life, mm -hmm. things that really if it, it things that even me as a person i just even can't even talk about it because it is very it brings someone's self-esteem down mm -hmm. because people don't think about this as a woman if at all you decide to um put my personal life out there remember i have a family mm -hmm. i have children and whenever you put these th things out on social media they will remain there. Mm -hmm. My children will see them, mm -hmm. you know. And every other person who probably even want to vote for another seat, they'll go on Google, they go search my name. But what do they find? You limit mm -hmm. people from doing exactly what they want. And this lady had to step down because how it hit her mm -hmm. was so hard mm -hmm. that she couldn't even sit in front of people even for a minute mm -hmm. she will cry and you see if, if, if you've not buckled up mm -hmm. in, I, as a woman in politics you cannot make it mm -hmm. you cannot mm -hmm. because live alone being a woman we are also human beings mm -hmm. and we have feelings so people forget that when you're doing this you're also our mental health is also important because once you do that it is hard to to forget some things and also I'll give an example of Amelia uh, Viambo. Mm -hmm. There is a time um, in parliament, she was undressed. And what went out in the public domain was that she stripped herself. And that was not true. Mm -hmm. That was not true. Mm -hmm. If this woman was not strong enough to still even walk around mm. and be a woman who decides that this is what I want and this is what I'll have to do mm -hmm. and no one is going to um, tell me otherwise, she'll, she'll still not be in politics because people saw her, you know, and these things, they are all over. Mm -hmm. And it is usually very difficult to um, regain your confidence mm -hmm. after such things are done. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's it's true basically bus lasmu kwek manga bus even though some lasma would work with my kichwango because there's yes. there's an incident someone was slapped in in parliament. It was a female and we all saw it by the way, it was on camera. But he got away with it. He just said no, it wasn't me. Yes. Bro, we could see you. <laughs> it's okay. I choose to forgive you for now. 
All right. <laughs> so there's something else I want to read for you before we start wrapping this up. Oh, gosh, we have not that much time left, but let me try to make it wholesome before we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, this is one of the things that I already mentioned about the uh, Constitution, but just to read it out for you. In efforts to attain gender parity and women empowerment, Article 27, Part 3 of the Constitution of Kenya, 2010, upholds the principle of equality and non-discrimination by guaranteeing fair treatment for both sexes. Further, the same Constitution as provided for by Articles 27 and 81 bars the holding of government seats either elective or appointive beyond two-thirds of the same gender hence the constitution of kenya encourages engagement of women in politics and in leadership targeting the historical exclusion of women in politics and contributing to the efforts that commenced in the 1980s on gender mainstreaming so this is something that has been going on for a while because we've gone through all the way from the 1980s and if we think about our forefathers who do we think about tomboya eh, who the dodingas do we kenyatas do we have a female in mind when we think about who made or who you know was part of of our, our sovereign nation that we can call free and fair today mm -hmm. one and i'm um, telling you masakarwa ah that mm. lady has really strengthened mm -hmm. and i think she's not really recognized as much as it's she should be recognized because she's fought so hard she's fought so ha she's fought for women so hard mm -hmm. that even i feel like we as women have not recognized her mm -hmm. you know because i remember she's also been fought mm -hmm. by men mm -hmm. you know because i even remember where when she was actually um uh, elected to be the vice um, president running it mm -hmm. there were some um blogs where people um tried to to put her down and one of the blogs um read that um the 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 vice president kamala harris in the u.s had con congratulated her mm -hmm. but in real sense um most of those um blogs were actually trying to um make her look like she was trying to look for validation and wow. that was not it, mm -hmm. you know. And also, I believe, um, like Fida Kenya, um, most women, I think, probably, if you're able to, you can actually join Fida Kenya mm -hmm. because they have programs where um, you, you, you find that um, they try to um, assist women, especially even in politics, um, to strengthen your, your, your thinking, to strengthen um, your capacity as a woman on how you're supposed to handle some of these things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. So there are actually forums that you can go to. Yes, to there are forums that you can actually go to, yeah, to assist you. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, guys, we've just been trying to, how to say, really put a lay on the land on how formidable you need to be as a, a female. And I know that, th I think the men are kind of tired of hearing it because I see on social media you, you also have to make a, a cameo, just see what people are saying on the ground. But again, the empowerment of women is not the bashing of men. It's just empowering women. And this is a male-dominated game. So we really do hope to see people, you know, like us. Because uh, just recently, the face of, of women in politics, say, you know, baby girl, women rep now forgotten where. She recently got proposed to. Like it was such a big thing. Her name is slipping my mind. But now the yeah. face also. Is she nominated? Ah, I think she was nominated. Yes, because um, most women actually, um, there's this norm that we get free seats. Because Kina what, nyamu. yes, what is remained of the seats, wow. you know? Yes, uh -huh. out of 149 seats, mm -hmm. I feel like we should at least get half, or if not half, mm -hmm. um, a, a, a better number, you know, of um, women who are, are going to sit in these spaces because I think we actually even don't get the respect we deserve because um, most people think us. that we get the free seats because you are a nominated um, senator, you are a nominated NCA, and all that. Hmm. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so let me just give you statistics now. She's brought something else very interesting, and this is all the way from 1963, but eh, 
and the number of elected women appointed and women in parliament was at zero percent uh, when we started but now things started to change i'll just pick it up from 97 97 were four elected women five appointed women and 1.4 percent in parliament in total 2002 we had 10 elected women eight appointed 7.1 in percentage 2007 16 elected six appointed 8.9 percent in parliament now that's you know we've been we're in 2020 nani but you can see the trend we're not that many yeah eight percent we're not there's even a point where zero 1.2 percent that's alarming mm -hmm. but currently i believe the two-third rule has been put place the but current government mm -hmm. has really tried on that mm -hmm. with the county government we have at least 23 percent of women mm -hmm. representing us in parliament mm -hmm. yes that's one of the things his excellency the president actually was very vocal about when he was campaigning yes, yes he did sh he did say that he's going to do it and he did it Yes. We are also waiting for other things to be done, but that's neither here nor mm -hmm. there. Thank you so very much. Maybe you'd like to wrap it up, closing remarks? Um, what I'd like to actually tell the women who want to um, be in the public and be politicians, you have to buckle up. It's not a bed of roses. It is not a walk in the park. You have to be bold enough to speak up and ensure that um, you're not going to be bullied because... There are so many bullies out here who are going to make you feel like, as a woman, you don't deserve um, any political seats. So therefore, you need to ensure that uh, you have your self-esteem up there. In check. Mm -hmm. Yes. To ensure that um, as a person, if you know you're a leader and you're a woman, get out there and speak up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And put on your gloves because it's going to be <laughs> a punching uh, situation mm -hmm. when you get into um, politics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Are you vying for something anytime soon? You're so um. composed. I think you should. <laughs> mm. I'll try. Hopefully, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm bold enough because I have a father who has actually um, always encouraged me and made me feel um, that I can do anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. If there's one person I feel who has always motivated me mm -hmm. is my dad and my mom as well. Mm -hmm. Because I remember there's one time I told um, my, my dad that given a chance I'd go back to high school because I felt um, what I did wasn't enough. And um, the best thing I have actually gathered mm -hmm. from him was that he told me it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you got back then. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Even if you feel like you didn't do your best, mm -hmm. where you are right now is where you need to start doing your best. Until, since then, till now, mm -hmm. that is what I usually do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. You're empowered indeed. I yes. see you. I see <laughs> you. Thank you so very much for coming. It's been a very interesting conversation. Very enlightening. I hope you have learned something or two. If you would like to watch this interview again, do not be afraid. Write by 4 channel on a YouTube. But please still interact with us. Brian Sakwa 101 is coming up with the tail end of the conversation and he has a very interesting questions on our socials. Again, White 5 on Facebook, White 5 4 channel on X, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. And then my name is Valentine. From myself and Stephanie Ayeta, we will see you when we see you. Have a fantastic day. <laughs>